Okay. Oh God. Well, I just didn't add everyone in my Discord to uh to say I'm streaming, and there was a little notification from um from Discord that said, "You're about to notify 100 people. Are you sure you want to do add everyone?" Which is actually a pretty nice thing for them to add to Discord because. That shit can be pretty annoying. I actually haven't played this game in like over a year, which is kind of crazy. Usually after I do a trashy trio race, I kind of get burnt out on a game so I don't go back to it for a while, but Mario 64 is one of my favorite games, so it's a little sad, but I'm playing it now, so it's whatever. Just closing a couple things real quick. Some random shit that starts in the background. I really need to, like, stop making shit start in the background on my computer. Hey, it's my boy Airborne Starker with that one, that one cheer badge, dude. Loyal fan, dude. I started instinctively getting the eight red coins, but I probably should just do um, the fucking first boss. As much as I love Mario 64 though, the first boss is actually pretty stupid. Like, who actually gives a shit about King bob -omb? Not even an interesting fight. And like, when I was a kid, I always thought you had to like throw him off the edge of the mountain and I thought a majority of people thought that because it's like you grab him so why wouldn't you throw him off the mountain but no you just have to fucking do whatever the shit throw him on the fucking throw him on his ass I'm gonna try and play this game fast but knowing me since it's been so long since I played this game I'm gonna be like fucking horrible dude I always think I'm good at games, and then I remember I'm really not. It's one of those things, I'm sure it happened to everyone, where you're like... You're you're like... You like playing video games a lot, but not a lot of people, like your siblings or whatever, enjoy playing video games that often. So you're just naturally better than everyone you play video games with, but then as soon as you get like old enough to like go online and play with other people, you just realize you're fucking trash, dude. It's such a sad realization. Big Bo Bomb's ass, hell yeah, dude. Okay, let's see. Two for the quick. Some of the beginning missions in Mario 64 are kind of boring. Luckily, you can get through them pretty fast. I just like how much freedom you have in Mario 64 to move around and do whatever you want. It's something I really appreciate in games. I don't know why, maybe it's because I'm just getting older and becoming more cynical. Okay, I just fucked up there. But, like, I'm so much more critical of games now than I have been, like, ever before. Like, I'll just straight up call a game shit if there's, like, an aspect that really annoys me. Trying to think of an example, but I mean, 
I don't like a lot of things that happen in Mario Galaxy. That kind of feel restrictive. I want to see a definitive Mario, uh, def definitive version of Mario 64 that has original graphics for DS. That'd actually be really cool. I'm super surprised they haven't done it since Mario 64 hacking is so advanced right now. Especially, I think most people know him in the Mario 64 community. I think his name is Kai's something, K's something. But he makes like a lot of fucking extreme Mario 64 hacks. Like he made Last Impact, he made, um, he made the Mario 64 online mod, online multiplayer mod. Or massively on my multiplayer mod. And he's done a lot of crazy shit with Mario 64 that I never thought was possible, so... What you're saying is pretty much, like... Simple compared to the stuff he's done. K's is how it's pronounced. Not K's, uh... Yeah, I, I know that's how it was spelled, I just didn't know how it was pronounced, so I tried to say both, but... K's, yeah, that makes sense. Not very good at pronouncing people's usernames, which is kind of ironic since a lot of people accidentally call me Blow Black. Like, happens so often. Like, literally, if someone sees my username, it's a 50 50 chance they'll say it right. Or maybe even a. Fuck, what the fuck? I'd like to blame my controller for that mess up, but I'll refrain from blaming the game until further mistakes. I'm also extremely quick to blame the game or controls on anything in games. It's like one of my probably faults. Is that if I do something badly, it's the game's fault. That's why I get so pissed in the Trash to Trio videos. I grew up with the DS version, I have nostalgic for it, but I like the original aesthetic. Yeah, I I first played the Oh, what's up, Craig? How you doing? Um, I first played the... The DS version as well. But I just vastly prefer the N64 version because the graphics are more charming. And I really don't like the character switching mechanic. Like, I like that there's multiple characters. I don't like how you have to go in a mission, go all the way up to a star, and then realize, Oh, I need Luigi to get through this fucking gate. It, like, restricts kind of the freedom you had in Mario 64 of just exploring and getting anything in any order. Which is what I love about this game, so... It's kind of stupid. Oh, I have to open the bomb thing. Forgot about that. Yahoo! That's why caps exist. Oh, yeah! Hmm. I don't remember how prevalent caps are in Mario 64 DS, because I haven't played, uh... Fuck. Why did I just launch up into that Goomba? I haven't... What am I trying to say? I haven't played Mario 64 DS in a really long time. Hey, Commander Root, thanks for the follow, dude. I don't have my... I usually don't have my follow notifications up, because I feel like... I don't know, I never really wanted to have them up, because it's kind of like... if some. I feel like if someone's watching a stream, and they follow... Like, for me personally, whenever I watch, like, a smaller streamer, and I follow, and they shout out my name, I kinda don't like it, so I don't tend to do it either, but since the fucking window was so small on the Mario 64 emulator, I just saw it in the top right, so I don't fucking know. Why did I do that? I need to do the classic hold down A and press B strat, dude. So stupid. I love it, though. I absolutely love all the little glitches you can do in this game. You can't do that in Mario 64 DS, either. I just really enjoyed the original controls, even though they're kind of glitchy. You know what else is cool? Mario 64 DS HD on Switch. Yes. That'd be amazing. I want a Sunshine remake on Switch. That'd be really fun. Mario, Super Mario 1, 1024, it's a crazy title, dude. Yahoo! 
But yeah. All I really want from Nintendo in terms of 3D Mario right now, though, is just some good Mario Odyssey DLC. Like, some solid DLC that isn't just, like, random shit like Luigi's Balloon World, which Luigi's Balloon World is fine, but... Oh, fuck. Why did I even try to collect the... What mission is this? Am I stupid? Shoot for the island in the sky. So where's the fucking bomb, dude? Just not thinking. Where's my boy bomb? Oh, there he is. Am I stupid? I don't like how you have to talk to the bomb to unlock the cannon. It kind of seems a bit stupid, but you know, whatever. It's a minor complaint. Right over the water, dude. That's some pro strats right there. And not blind luck. Oh, some, sometimes I wish I had more control over the camera. Easy me escape with a friend and getting a Wario hat in order to get the star. Hell yeah, dude. Dude, so many levels in this game are so memorable. I love Easy Maze Cave. The atmosphere, the music. Okay, we have six red coins. I forget where the rest are. I swear if there's one in the sky, that would be annoying. I don't think there is, though. Uh, I don't remember where the last ones are. I think I know one's over here. Oh, there's two here. Okay. I knew one was here, but apparently it's so. uh, Parallel universes, hell yeah, dude. I fucking love that you can just like long jump into, or what, what, how does that even work? It was so technical too. Like, I watched that one video that got like a million views of him like explaining how to like do Hazy Maze Cave without A, without any A presses. And that shit was so fucking complicated and technical, I'm like, why even bother at that point? Like, sometimes I, I'm just amazed by how fucking dedicated people are to doing that random shit. God, parallel universes. It's kind of interesting, though. I feel like Mario 64 is the type of game that's too good to be true, because when I think about all the circumstances... Like, this is the first, like, 3D platformer, and it's so good, but it's, like, the first... I mean, there's a couple other, like, three, three-dimensional three platformers before Mario 64, but the real, like, 3D platformer as we know it started with Mario 64, and out of the gate, it was just so good. It's really weird. I kind of wish uh, Panin had a better attitude about memes. He fails to realize that we're laughing with him and not at him. Does he? Damn, that, that's kind of stupid. No, well, I guess it's kind of stupid because it kind of feels bad. I don't know. It kind of hap- it, That actually does happen occasionally, though, where, like, people just don't realize, um, or people don't know how to laugh at their themselves or laugh with people about, like, a little meme that they unintentionally create. I feel like most people know how to do that, but there's an odd amount of people who don't, and it's kind of weird. I've always kind of been the type of person to embrace stuff like that, like, completely, and be the person to meme other people in that way, so... I just can't... It's, like, so far off from my mindset to where you couldn't really play along with something like that. So, I don't really understand, but... The whole, there was a whole imager, whole imager gallery of him venting about how he took offense to memes about Rolling Rock's video and how it made him not want to do a new video on his main channel. Hello? That's such a weird way of looking at it. Because when I see that video, I'm like, it's a huge success. Nobody would have expected that video to get that many views and that much attention. And I mean, come on, it's a little funny. Like, Parallel Universes is like so crazy and convoluted how he went about this. It's impressive, for sure. We won't make fun of him for it, but it's just really, it's really interesting and it's a little ridiculous at the same time, so you, it's something you would, like, chuckle at, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know how that would discourage. The only way I could see that, in it, like for me, if it was me, the only way I could see that discouraging me from making another video was that I couldn't talk the memeiness of the last video, but... I mean, he could have just done the same parallel universe thing for another level, so... I don't really know. The video had like six times as much effort put into it because... He got in a fight with his parents shortly before making it. And it was basically made because he didn't have motivation to make anything else. Pink Lol 16. I recognize that username, but I don't know who that is. Like, I, I recognize that username, but I have an idea who it is, but I might be wrong. I don't know. I know a lot of, like, I recognize a lot of usernames, so. Pink Lol. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I just see these... I know it's not viable to get these red coins right away, but I see these red coins and I just can't help but collect them, dude. They're so distracting. Holy. So I guess I'm just gonna try and do the red coins now. Although, I don't even know if I have all the platforms unlocked to get all of them. I don't even- wait. Yeah, I don't- yeah, I don't think I- wait. Yeah, I don't have all the platforms, what the fuck? Unless that platform's invisible. Oh, I do. I can draw a distance wall. Okay. Ah! Oh, I suck. In one of his newer videos, Penin sent- Scoop of the quick scoop here. What the hell? How do you even do that, dude? Yeah, I've got to catch up on that guy's videos. I know he doesn't make videos frequently, so I just never bother to check, but. Ah. Holy dude, what the hell's going on? Maybe I should just wait for it to go around. Maybe patience is key, dude. I'm such an. I'm so impatient. Especially when I have the ability to fucking jump around like a monkey, dude. I can't really be patient, come on. Use ball clones to make him stuck. Yes. Oh my gosh. I hate- I love how you have to build up your speed for so long, dude. Okay, fuck you want me. I'm trying to get my coins, dude. I don't think I've ever done the red coins mission this early. Like, to where Womp is trying to fight me when I'm doing this. The camera angle's so fucking weird. What the fuck? I feel like I'm so stupid for doing this this early. So counterproductive. But I've never actually done the red coin so early, so it's kind of interesting to do. Let's see if we can line this up. I like Mario's low poly version. What? Oh my god, the camera angle changes and it fucks up my whole momentum. Okay, I can't do that. Uh. Mamma mia. Then he would PU himself to see Koopa the Quick. I don't remember how, but it's very. I imagine it's very elaborate. I wonder if someone could make a hack. To where the parallel universes is actually an accessible game mechanic. And like, instead of ha the parallel universes like aren't invisible. And then like, I don't know, you could like redesign- I know- I know the parallel universe is a glitch, so I don't think this is possible. But like, you could redesign it to like, the next- if you go into a parallel universe of like, Womp's Kingdom, and there'd be a more accessible way of getting there without like, doing fucking crazy shit. 
um, it would be like textured differently or something. And there might be like an extra star hidden somewhere that correlates to something in the actual version of the stage. I don't know. That's an interesting idea. I love the music in Mario 64 so much. Dude, if anyone dislikes the soundtrack of Mario 64, I don't know, dude, you're a monster. You're not even human. I feel like I'm so disjointed when I play this game. Like, <laughs> the, for going up to Womp, I did it like the normal way. But then that one, I just did the, the long jump, like, speed or anyway. Which is what I usually do, but... I can't believe we only need eight stars to get to Bowser, dude. I guess they need to make more... I, I do like how a lot of levels are accessible, though, without getting a lot of stars, because... Because, um, if you get stuck on an area, which I don't anymore in Mario 64, but I, uh, have in the past when I first played it, and, well, I don't know if I have when I first played it, but anyways, in other Mario games, I've gotten stuck on stars like Sunshine, etc., so, it's just kind of neat that you can just do things in mo almost any order, and you're not required to get any specific stars. The sounds in this game are so compressed that when you hear the unedited wave files, it sounds so weird, especially it's a me, Mario. Oh, true. I actually haven't heard the uncompressed versions of the Mario 64 sound effects. I should look that up. Bam. What the fuck? Did I suck? Yeah, I haven't played Mario 64 in like at least a year. I need to brush up on my Mario 64 skills, especially if I want to actually play the ROM hacks, dude. Without getting mad and saying the developer was shit at making the ROM hacks. Look up it's a me Mario on YouTube. Yeah, I will. I kick down the plant. Seven? Hey, easy. I don't even know why I tried to do that before beating a wall. Dude, I wonder. I know it's probably possible knowing Mario 64, but I wonder if I could pull off getting up there. I don't know what I'd have to do. Maybe a triple jump, backflip, and then back into it. Oh, I fucking suck. Okay, whatever. Yikes. Ugh. To the caged island. A lot of people say it's hard to control Mario, uh, Mario with the owl, but I always found it kind of easy. Maybe just because I know how to do it. I'm always kind of interested sometimes, like, what my reaction would be if I was playing Mario 64 for the first time today. Because I'd be probably be calling so much shit, like, garbage. There's actually a couple classic games that I've never played that I probably could 
play and then get mad at, but in an alternate universe, I'd be I'd love it to death. Like Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, some other stuff. Is it weird that I have more nostalgia for Star Road than Mario 64? Uh, maybe. It just depends how young when you play, how young you were when you played Star Road, and it depends how close you played Mario 64 for the first time compared to Star Road. Um. I mean, under certain circumstances, it's definitely not weird, but I've never really heard of that being the case until now. But I guess it kind of makes sense. I really haven't played Star Road as much as I should have. I don't ever think I actually 100% in that game either. I need to get back to playing that for sure. Although some of the stars are really convoluted and hard to get. Or maybe I just don't try hard enough, but... I don't know. I just feel like the Mari the original Mario 64 is just so much simpler to play, so it's nice to just pop in and play. But I probably should play some more Star Road. Oh no, I have to bleh. What am I what the fuck am I doing? I need it I'm getting the cannon to shoot the wall. Okay. I'm stupid. I like how scrappy some of these stars I'd, star areas are too. Like, you can really tell that the developers made a level, like, a, just made, like, a level that's fun to jump around, like a little playground, a play box or whatever. Um, and then just put stars randomly in there. Like, the star placement was an afterthought, and the level, just making the level fun to jump around in without the collectibles was the first priority, which I think is really cool. Because I feel like some other games are, like, more designed to where you place the star and then you're like, how will I design a level around it? Kind of like, a good example is ukulele. Like, for example, there's areas in ukulele which are just invented to get a jiggy. Like, oh no, collect, like, fucking a bunch of snowballs for this snowman or some shit, you know? And then the whole, like, area of the level is designed to get that one jiggy. But in Mario 64, it feels like they actually made a level, and then they place, they just happen to place stars in it. So you have an objective, which I think is a much better way of going about it. Just so many problems with ukulele, but I think that kind of covers the main issue. I really wish that game was better. I have faith, but, you know. Having faith in Kickstarter projects, lol. Mighty number no. 9. Ukulele. Any other fucking reboot Kickstarter game is probably gonna be shit too. I don't know why. It had the original creators, but maybe the company's fucking making sure the game was good and all the other teams surrounding it is more important than the creator themselves. You know? Is there another chat? Is there another chat? Uh, let me see. I don't think there is. There might be a subscriber room, but. Uh, I know I only have one subscriber on Twitch, so nobody would be talking in there. I used to have three, but, you know. I don't stream enough. And I don't even have an emote to be worth subscribing to. I still don't know what to make the emote. For a year, I've had- for almost a year, ever since September last year, I've had the ability to make an emote. But I just don't know what it is, what it should be. Because I want it to be- I've said this multiple times, but I want it to be an emote where you don't have to, like, know who I am to think it's a good emote to use. Like an emote that you would spam in a random stream chat, and it'd be funny. Regardless if you know who I am or not. Like, lo for example, LOL is funny. Even if you don't know who Total Biscuit is. Or was. Rest in peace, but... Or, like, I don't fucking know who the fuck Kappa is. Or, like... All those other emotes, but... They're funny on their own without knowing who the person is. I kind of like how 
simple all these stars are. Hey, easy. No platforming needed, dude. Seems like if you're good at the game, you can, like, actually skip some stuff. But, like, in other games, even, like, Mario Galaxy, for example, the being good or not at the game just determines how much, how less you're gonna die compared to somebody else and how fast you're gonna do it. But here, it's just like, if you're good at the game, you can actually do some cool shit. It just feels so much more rewarding. Luckily, Mario Odyssey actually captures a lot of that shit, which I'm actually super surprised because I didn't think the modern Nintendo Mario development team were capable of doing something like that. But Mario Odyssey is a really good, really good game. And it's so rare to have a game that good now because I feel like everyone's just trying to recapture the old games and doing it in all the wrong ways, but Odyssey actually uh, did it correctly. Oh no, I'm gonna die. Yeah, I'm dead. See, uh... How am I not dead? What the fuck? Dude, I swear if I jumped out, then went back in the water, and then died immediately, now that would've been tilting. I think- I honestly think I'm super familiar with the Mario 64 soundtrack, not just because I played this game a bunch, but also because the Mario 64 track is in so many YouTube videos. It's like the number one fucking gaming YouTuber soundtrack, I swear. Unless Ken's eel actually come out. Thank you. Uh, there we go. Easy. Oh my god, what the fuck? Holy shit. That's a tilter. I felt like I wasn't even hitting his hitbox. Yeah, the hitboxes are a bit wonky in this game, although it makes sense. Let's try and use the shell, dude. No one ever uses this shit. Oh, okay. Okay, you fucking clam. Piece of shit. Let's see how it is. Wow, barely even lasted, okay. Let's heal up. I kind of like how you can just heal in water. I know they had separate, like, meters and sunshine, which I guess kind of makes sense, but the fact that, like, I don't know, water's, like, a health or replenishing source is just kind of cool. It's like, oh, this refreshing water is healing my wounds. the camera was better. Okay, let's see, let's see. Yikes! What the hell, dude? Are these hitboxes? So annoying. I'm gonna fucking die. I wonder if they- no. I was about to say, I wonder if they delay the last tick if you're swimming upward. But I don't think the design of this game is that dynamic. swim into that star. I've never really been able to. I think I've been able to do it once or twice, but I'm not exactly sure how to go about it. Besides mashing this button, dude. God. I'm sure there's like a certain angle you have to go at. Hi, Eel. I'm gonna go right next to you. You're gonna fucking bite my head off. Okay. Oh, I forget how this fucker works. Different level, see why not. Okay, 
Okay, this is a frustrating level too, but hey. I might be better at it. At least it's more like consistent than me, I guess. I don't know. I feel like it's more controllable than getting that fucking ELD baiting enemy. Enemy AI. Uh, 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 Try again, dude. Isn't there a star you can get in Mario Odyssey by looking up at the ceiling? That's pretty cool. I love Mario Odyssey so much. I should be I should play that on stream too soon. I don't know if I've played it on stream before, it maybe a little bit, but yeah there is. Hell yeah, dude. I haven't really played Mario Odyssey since I 100%ed it back, like, near when it came out, maybe November, December. Yeah, I got burnt out on Mario Odyssey too, but I feel like it's getting around the time where I would go back into Mario Odyssey, but I, I'm still gonna wait a bit longer. Maybe like a year, a full year, or a year and a half. This happens with pretty much every single player game you play, same. I got so burnt out on Breath of the Wild, but recently... I've been kind of wanting to go back to it and play the hard mode. But yeah. I don't know, it's been a lot harder for me to get into single player games, period, as well. Maybe it's just because I play so much League, but... Like, even if I have good games, like, I wouldn't, I'm not really, like... I'm not really dying to play more of the game if that makes sense like i'm like oh this game's pretty good pretty cool but i'm not like dying to play more there's only a few games that do that for me though where i'm dying to play more yeah i feel like there's a game an indie game that i really have been wanting to play on stream and i forgot about it when i was going to start this stream and i probably should have played that as well or at least considered it, but I don't know if I might do it in another stream, is Fez, dude. Fez is one of my favorite indie games, and I know the creator is controversial, but the game itself is super, 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 super fun. I love it. And I started replaying it, like, maybe six months ago, and then in my head I was like, I want to stream this instead, and then just never do it because I'm fucking retarded, I guess. I wish the draw distance was better so I would actually know where to shoot. Luckily, I'm pretty much a natural. I'm pretty much a god at Mario 64. You know. You know. Just naturally born with the talent to wield the epic game of Mario 64. Oh. Uh, using the word epic unironically. Lol. Custom music has been invented for Pikmin 1. The first custom song is just an MP3 to MIDI Sponge... That MIDI of Sun SpongeBob TV being alive. What the fuck? <laughs> Let me guess. You put that into Pikmin 1, dude? Come on. Dude, some of the shit you put into the Bikman games is insane, dude. I've actually been seeing, like, a couple of people, like, Daz... Well, I say a couple people, but I've only really seen, da seen Daz reviews play Bikman. Uh, obviously, I think Grapefruit played Bikman, and, like, I don't know who else, but... 
I'm glad your hack is doing well, because it's definitely crazy as fuck. Oh, that's Mr. Broccoli. He does random shit in X control. Hopefully he doesn't break it, it seems. Yeah, dude. I've never heard of Mr. Broccoli. A sponge attack, I just fell. Nice. Wait, so earlier, I know before you were DMing me about, like, the sequel to Bikmin that you were making. How's that been going? Did you actually release that? Because, uh, or, like, oh, nice. So you're actually working on, like, a non-meme Pikmin hack? completely serious yeah just throwing yeah i can see that just maybe throwing a few jokes in there here and there but overall being pretty standard or maybe i mean based off how many memes you put in pikmin maybe i mean bikman maybe less meme to you is just like i don't know having like a hundred memes in instead of a thousand who knows dude beating me. Too bad he sucks. Holy, I hate that corner, dude. Yeah, I might actually be able to do 100 points. Ah! No, I just want to beat this guy. Fuck 100 points. <coughs> dude, I feel bad for everyone who just walks out that door right away. And you know so many people did, too. Coin, uh, a red coins, cool, cool mountain is a little, a little cancer. I think the reason Case is so skilled is because he's like the only person who knows the language of Mars or was programmed in. Oh, really? I guess that kind of makes sense. What language was it even programmed in? So if he knows the language by heart and knows like how the game was constructed. That basically means his hacks have the like quality and stability of an official product, like as if Nintendo were to expand on the game themselves. Oh uh, yeah, I've never even heard of that, so it probably is like nobody else knows how to use it. And it's not—it's probably not really useful for much things, anyways. Only that, and maybe 
hacking a couple other games. I mean, it is a fucking uh, programming language from the 90s, so. I don't know if there's a red coin over there. Like under the mountain, like on the underneath mountain side part. There are books on it, but it's so inapplicable in modern day tech. <laughs> Mario 64 hacking is the only thing it's good for. Might as well just rename the programming language the Mario 64 hacking language, dude. It is kind of neat that he did dedicate the time to actually do that because he's definitely benefiting from it. Like, a lot of people know about his hacks and they are cool as shit, so. And Mario 64 is a super beloved game, so it was pretty smart for him to do that, one. And number two, I mean, I bet he enjoys doing it. But, like, since it's something only he really knows, it kind of makes him, like, unique in that way, which is great. I just got a game over. Yeah, I'm sure, obviously, but... Dude, I'm sucking a lot more than I thought I would. I thought I'd actually be doing kind of good and, like, blazing through this, but maybe I just am bad. Kaz is good at hacking, but he lacks game design skills. A lot of his more serious hacks are really unfair and boring at times. I agree. I I can't I don't really want to shit talk him too much cuz like and I don't think I really have I don't really think I think that badly of him but like and I am impressed by what he's done and all that and respect him and all that but I helped play test his uh, last impact pack and I tried to give a lot of suggestions but he just he just ignored a lot of it which is just kind of a little irksome I just don't, I don't think he's extremely good at game design either. Like, I feel like Last Impact has so many great aspects to it, and I love, like, a lot of the ideas in it, but I feel like they're, e they're poorly implemented in some areas. Sometimes they're really, go they're really, uh, good, like, how they're implemented, but in, in other times, they're not really. And I know the automatic answer to this would be, like, well, why don't you make the hack? And it's like, yeah, I probably could if like i had the hacking skills and like the tech knowledge i probably could make a better design mario 64 hack but i just don't really have the skill for that and i'm not really interested in like learning how to program and all that shit yeah I don't know. Did he just make the hack all by himself? Because, like, if he made the hack all by himself, I feel like he could have made the hack great if he had, like, a friend or, like, some sort of colleague to, like, help him, like, help come up with ideas, help, like, design the game playtest the game and him actually taking the feedback properly he did have a good decent amount of um good playtesters but i feel like a lot of them were like yes men and they only pointed out bugs and then there was some things that i pointed out and i don't know i just didn't really care so it's whatever but i do think that game has a lot of potential and didn't really live up to it the original music was made by Christopher Brown. Yeah, the music's actually really good in that hack. I like it a lot. Yeah. And I mean, it's kind of... I mean, people can make great games all by themselves. Like, I'm pretty sure Undertale was made by only one guy. But it's really good to have, a, like, a second opinion. And it's fine that he created it all himself, but... I don't know. I feel like he should have done more work to polish it, but I do understand his position because I think he was working on it for like a really long time and he and once it was kind of like in a very playable state, he just wanted to get it out and have people play it, but and honestly most people play it like 
uh, Peanut Butter Gamer and other stuff. Uh, I mean, other people, other YouTubers, and they're like, oh, this hack is so great, it's so ambitious and stuff. And I agree, but like, I don't know. I feel like for a long term game that you actually. I mean, it's a fan game, okay? It's a fan game, so it doesn't really matter if it's kind of like wonky on the game design side because it's a fan game. But if you actually wanted it to like be compared to the original Mario 64 and want it to like actually be like seen objectively as maybe a better version of Mario 64 or a great sequel to Mario 64 and have it actually stand the test of time he should have done uh he should have put more work into it and made sure it was absolutely perfect before releasing it but he probably wants to move on to other stuff and it's a fan project so I can't really criticize him too hard but it could be a lot better Basically, every Super Mario 64 guide has, I mean, every Super Mario 64 hack has, is that you needed a guide to beat a lot of missions. Yeah, I feel like that's so bad. I, I know the mindset behind it. Like, okay, if you're playing a Mario 64 hack, you are probably really good at Mario 64, so you want a challenge, which is fine, and there can be challenging stars. But I feel like putting stars in the game that are kind of mandatory to get and having them like really hidden or the way you get them is like really kind of bullshit and obscure i feel like that's kind of bad like it like it's okay to have like super hidden stars right where it's like oh this is a really cool hidden treat that i never knew about like a secret star and it's really rewarding to find but if you have a really hidden and obscure star that's on the official star list and you just have like this big gap in the star list and it's like your next mission and you're trying to work towards this hidden star that's meant to be found as like a secret or just like an extra off the beaten path like technically it's not required because you only need a certain number of stars but it feels like it's a main star and it is required and it just makes it a lot more unpleasant when you're just like running around trying to search for it and you can't find it so This isn't a problem for Star Road and Last Impact because they're decently popular, but more obscure ones like Star Revenge. There aren't many guides that exist. Ideally, you shouldn't need a guide in the first place. I agree. I think you should need a guide for, like, some hidden things. Like, for example, there's this really cool place in Last Impact. There's a lot of good things to Last Impact. In Last Impact, there's this, um, area. It's There's a bridge to Bowser's Castle in the overworld, right? And on the, uh, along the bridge is like this little, um, this little, like, hollowed out cave area, like, kind of, uh, parallel to the bridge, and you can long jump from the bridge to reach that secret area, and it's just a secret area with a couple extra stars, and I think that area is really cool and it's hidden, and you might need a guide to find that, because it's kind of more like, uh, if you find it yourself, it's super rewarding, but it's not gonna be super obvious type thing, and I feel like a secret like that is good. But if you need a guide to get one of the main stars in the game, and it's not super clear on what to do, then I feel like it's just bad. So I don't get Bowser. I don't know how the developers didn't see that, or hear that sound clip and not think it said Gay Bowser and they shipped it. That shit definitely says so long, Gay Bowser. Kinda like how in Sonic Heroes, Knuckles says shit a lot. And I know it's supposed to be like shit or like fucking a fucking grunting sound, but it literally sounds like shit. It's hard to hear it any other way. Uh Okay. Where should I go next? I'm just gonna go to the next area. The beginning stars are so boring, dude. The beginning world. I played back last impact. My biggest gripe is the difficulty and how you can't play a blind. Kaiser's excuse is that if you're a scrub, you should do only any percent. But I'm a completionist. Yeah. No, I found it too difficult even when I was going for any percent. Like, I don't care about going for 100%, but I feel like the star requirements to get to the next area is so high, and m so many of the stars are super difficult, that, like, you, there's no, like, 
Like, if you're gonna go through the game 100%, you have to do some of these ludicrously hard stars. There's just no, just not enough easy or simple stars. And I feel like when you're introducing a player to a new area or a new game mechanic, you have to have the first star of that mechanic be easy. Just so they can understand it or they don't get frustrated. I don't know. Like, the game, for one person, I'm really impressed with a lot of the stuff he did. And I'm not saying his game's bad, but I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of, like, I don't know. I care, I guess I care a lot about game design, so it's like, just, I don't know. Like, you can be good at making game mechanics and, like, actually physically, like, programming the game, and Kai's is amazing at that, but to be, like, to be pretty intelligent in just game design is, like, kind of a different skill, and he doesn't really have that skill in my opinion. Or at least not nearly as much as his programming skill. Then for me, I feel like I'm pretty decent at game design and I'm not gonna toot my own horn too much because I haven't really worked on many game projects and all of the ones I have worked on kind of just got cancelled because I'm shit at programming, but I don't know. Oh, I meant to long jump, now I'm gonna waste so much health. You bully. Bully back the bully dude. And this is how you deal with cyber bullies, dude. Look, I'm punching him in the face. Too bad he can't. This is all mine. Let's see. Oh. What the fuck? I suck. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Another reason why Kai's excuse is bad is because you can't beat the first Bowser level without save states. Yeah! A f that's a problem, like... Okay, there's two different types of difficulty. There's difficulty in, um, how, like, how much skill you need, and then there's difficulty in figuring out. Like, there's difficulty through lack of knowledge and then lack of skill, or knowledge and skill, the two difficulty scales. And I hate stuff that's difficult just because you don't know how to do it. Like, if you knew how to do it, it would be easy. And that can that can be fine with, like, some things like puzzles. Puzzles are the exact example of um, difficulty through knowledge. And puzzle games, or, like, investigation games or whatever, uh, that's the whole point of them, is to, like, figure out what's going on. Like, Ace Attorney, for example, this is a perfect example of a knowledge skill game. And that's fine. But games like Mario 64, like and other 3D platformers and stuff, I just really, really, really dislike it when a lot of the difficulty just comes through knowledge. And that's fine, again, with like bonus and secret stars, but it, like, going back to the Bowser fight in Last Impact, I literally did not know what you had to do to beat Bowser for like the first six attempts. Like, <clears throat> that shouldn't be why I'm dying. It's, I should be dying because the boss is hard, not like hard to beat. And I know what to do, but I'm just not doing it right. It shouldn't be hard because I just don't know what to do. Here we go. To be fair though, Star Road is bad at times. Yeah, I mean Star Road isn't perfect, although I prefer it over Last Impact. But Last Impact I have a lot of good ideas. Dude, I've, I've heard people say that last impact is feels like a real sequel to Mario 64 and Star Road feels like shit and I'm like hello that's your opinion but you're fucking weird your fucking opinion is fucking weird dude uh I'm clipping that what are you clipping hey what's up Amber lava hurt me die in lava me hurt me die uh Star Road's first Bowser was hard because you had to fight a bunch of piranha plants on an air flap oh yeah I still preferred it over Last Impact, to be honest. I did. What star am I on? Bully the bully? Okay. Fuck, dude. Why, I su why do I suck? What the hell, dude? I didn't mean a ground pound. I meant a long jump. Let's 
chill. The bully missions are actually kind of annoying though. They do feel a little wonky. Damn, now that we're talking about these Mario 64 ROM hacks, I kind of want to go back to play Last Impact just so I can like demonstrate what's bad about it and what's good about it. But, I don't know. Uh, fucking bullies, dude. Dude, I love how glitchy Mario 64 is though. Like for some reason, when games are glitchy in the way that you can like utilize them to your benefit, I actually enjoy the game. Like for example, I actually really enjoy Sonic 06. Even though there's a lot of detrimental glitches, if you know how to manipulate a lot of them, you can play the game pretty well. And I don't know. I just kind of like the little sc the scrappy feel, dude. Stop those bullies, hell yeah, dude. Dude, can you imagine how many people just fucking, um, in like, uh, 1960 or what, or that, 1960, 1996, they're just like elementary school or middle school kids, they just got Mario 64, they're fucking nerds, they get bullied every day at school, they're like, ugh, I'm getting bullied, and then they fucking play Mario 64, they get to, they get into fucking Lethal Lava Land, and in their heads are just like, fuck these bullies, dude, fucking Billy fucking... Beat me up at school, I'm gonna get revenge by fucking throwing him in the lava, dude. Here we go. So hype. I saw a YouTuber playthrough who was really optimistic about Last Impact at the beginning but hated it by the end because of the reasons we just talked about. Thank God, dude. Which YouTuber was it? Because I feel like every t Like, I haven't watched a lot of Last Impact videos, but I feel like I see YouTubers like Nathaniel Bandy and Peanut Butter Gamer who just go who just open up the game and they're like, this is so great, dude. Every, every hack Kai's makes is fucking great. And I, I mean, I've said it multiple times, like, I respect him a lot and I think he makes some gr great concept hacks, but his game design is just not up to par. And people, I mean, people, he, I mean, even though he did a great job and it's amazing that he did do it and I certainly couldn't do that, make the game that he did, I still think it's fair to criticize him. I don't know why I have to keep reiterating that, but, dude, so many times people will just clip something I say where it's just, like, I'm criticizing someone and they're like, Damn, you fucking hate that guy's guts, dude! You really do! Like, ever since I made that Hedox video, people are like, Damn, dude, you really hate Hedox with a burning passion? And it's like, I'm pretty sure I made it clear in the video that I just thought the situation was humorous. Fucking stupid. Some obscure one. It, there wasn't any commentary. Uh, I think Ant Dude talked about ROM hacks once, but he didn't like Last Impact either, and he just grabbed it like, hey, look at this cool thing I made instead of, hey, look at this fun thing I made. Hell yeah, dude. Dude, I thought I was the only person who didn't like Last Impact, because I made that stream on my YouTube, which, when I streamed on YouTube, and then I just, like, kept the VODs up. Maybe I should do that again, I don't know, but... Um... That VOD has a decent amount of views, has like 200, and there's like so many people who just, I don't know, disagreed heavily with my opinion. Especially when I first made that video, because I made that video right when the game came out, and I was criticizing it off the bat. Now it's a little better in the comments, but I actually do like going back to the comments on that video. Kind of makes me want to put stream VODs on my YouTube again, and I mean, there's not many videos going up on it anyway, so I might, but I don't think I'll upload a full VOD, I think I might just upload clips. But I'm also way too lazy to clip my streams, like, I understand why streamer, there's like these, there's these content creators like Tyler1 and etc, who just stream all the time and then they get YouTube, like, editors and a team of people or like one person to like edit their like go through the streams and edit it and make it highlights and i don't blame that he hires someone else because doing that shit is so time consuming like i'd love to make highlights of my stream but going through an entire stream and finding the great parts is just so time consuming dude especially if you think there's a lot of great parts because i don't know i think everything that comes out of my mouth is fucking amazing so you know you know. Here we go. Just kidding. <coughs> I wonder
founder of Minus World members are under a contractual agreement with Kai's not to criticize him. Oh yeah, Minus World. That's like Nintendo, Nathaniel Bandy, and a couple other guys that I don't know about. Yeah, I wonder. I don't know. I get it. I don't know any of these guys personally, like Nathaniel Bandy, and like. Well, I guess I know Hedox a bit, but I don't know a lot of these guys personally. But I don't know, I get a weird vibe from them. I get a... I mean, they're very upbeat and cheery, and I'm probably, I'm sure they're probably good people, but every time I hear them interact or see them interact, I get like a weird vibe from them. I really don't know why. You don't know Simple... F oh, I know Simple Flips. I didn't, just didn't know Simple Flips was part of Minus World. I know who Simple Flips is. I just didn't know he was part of Minus World. I only watched one video on Minus World by Nintendo and he's like, oh, there's Minus World and we're not actually making any videos together, but we're going to conventions and I'm just like, I don't give a shit. And then I clicked off the video. He sent a Nathaniel Bandy a meme once, does that count? I guess. I don't really know any of those guys. I've never really interacted with most of those guys, but. Maybe it's extremely unfair for me to say I get a weird vibe from them, but, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just in my head. Those guys definitely seem a tad strange. But maybe I should just stop being such a hater, dude. It's actually so annoying though, now that I'm thinking about it, because I feel like I can't say anything about anyone without someone, like, in, in a more public eye. Saying it on stream's fine, but like, I feel like I can't, like, be nice to someone or mean to someone without being called out as, like, a hater or a dick sucker. Like, I really don't understand these extreme reactions to, like, simple human interactions that people have on the internet. Like, just such a magnifying, like, this doesn't happen to me in particular, it's like a slight fear I guess I have? concern in the very subconscious of my mind but like obviously it doesn't apply to me that much because I'm not extremely big or anything but like I feel like there's such a magnifying like I, I witness I see people there's such a magnifying glass on them I feel like and I feel like any normal interaction they do is just blown up to giant proportions like uh it's crazy oh what the fuck is the police hello I didn't do anything illegal did you hear those fucking sirens dude jeez so much fucking crime, dude. Sometimes I'm afraid to give constructive criticism because I don't want to hit, hurt their feelings. I agree. I mean, you can word it in a nice way. I've worded stuff in a nice way. But, for example, like, I feel like some creators get so butthurt when they see constructive criticism. For, like, like for example, there was someone who made a video called League of Legends is the day League of Legends died. It's so weird because he has a series called The Day Game Died. And he puts a bunch of random game titles in there. He's, there. He has The Day Fortnite Died, The Day PUBG Died, and some of the videos are good and actually make sense, like The Day PUBG Died. But you don't make a The Game The Day They Died series. You don't make The Day X Game Died as a series. Like, because you can't just call your video The Day Something A Game Died if the game isn't dead. And he just does that because it's part of his series name and oh, the game's not actually dead, but it's the name of series. Whatever, that's another rant. This is fucking this is retarded. But anyways, he made a video called The Day League Died and it was obviously wasn't about when a League died. It was just a criticism video of League of Legends. And I, I understand, I understood some of his opinions, but a lot of them were moronic. And I made a comment talking about it. And the video actually has a decent amount of dislikes on it. It has like 40% dislikes. Um... And my comment got a lot of thumbs up because, because it was actually right in the criticism. And this is a guy who puts a love, he puts a love mark on every comment he does. Um, 
he does a love mark. I'm, I'm so slow at talking and explaining stuff. But basically, he puts a love mark on every comment he gets. But on that video, he put a love mark on every every comment that it was agreeing with him. And every comment that was disagreeing with him, even if I had a lot of thumbs up, he didn't put a love mark on. But he put a love mark on a league YouTuber, Candy Monday, who put... Who, um... Who put a slightly constructive or a slightly critical comment. So it's like, this guy only respects your criticism if you have a high sub count. Hmm. That's a little strange, dude. Might... Hmm. It might be that you're fucking butthurt about criticism and you only give people value if they have high sub counts. Because, you know, the more subs you have, the more... The higher quality human being you are. Everyone knows that, dude. It's a YouTube law. What's the crazy dude? Anyone who says Fortnite's dead is retarded too. I agree. Fortnite's not dead. I'm not extremely fond of Fortnite, but that game's not dead. You're fucking stupid if you say that. In this video, I'm explaining exactly what I do to collect squash for rolling rocks and half a presses. Hell yeah, dude. Here we have it. Rocks for wo <laughs> rolling rocks and that many A presses, dude. How many- ca Everybody, you gotta count. How many A presses do I do in this mission, dude? Look back on the stream, count my A presses, dude. Guaranteed under 100, dude. Yikes. Okay, wait. Do it from when I don't die to the, the rocks. Okay, let's count my A presses real quick. Gotta have- Gotta see how close I get to the world record of half A presses in this mission. Half A presses, dude. So fucking stupid. Like, how do you not meme half A presses, dude? You're literally, like, half A press. Like, you can't cut the button in half and press it. Like, hello? I don't know how you don't meme that. Okay, I think I've done five, six. I don't even know why I'm counting this. Seven. man got butthurt because his video got a million views and he talked about half a presses and people meme the shit out of half a press like how i don't know it's crazy okay i'm pressing it so much okay one i'm gonna do it very deliberately don't over press the a every time i do a stroke it's an a press it's a lot of a presses dude Shit, I lost count when you started swimming. Rip. Damn, dude. I should have never pressed A. Lost swimming. That's such a weird challenge, too. Who thinks of doing a Mario 64 challenge with a certain amount of A button presses? I mean, I guess it's kind of cool. But it... Number one, it's a weird challenge in general. And then number two, we took it to the extreme where he, like, literally warps Mario into glitched versions of the map just so he gets, like, less A presses. It's fucking crazy, dude. I love it. Back in my day, Wario... You need a Wario hat to beat this mission. Thank God this game isn't Mario 64 DS. Dude, my o nose is so fucking itchy at the bottom, dude. Dude, when I was a kid, I always got so pissed off. Because, like, my nose, all like, for some reason, always gets fucking itchy at the bottom of it. I don't know why. And then I was, as a kid, I was scratching that shit. And my mom's like, stop picking your nose. It's like, hello, I'm not picking my nose, dude. Fuck off, mom. Fucking tilting, dude. Getting so fucking sweaty, dude. Now you even have a fan on. I hate the temperature right now. Cancer. Okay. 
been playing for like an hour and 15 minutes and I have 30 stars. That's about a quarter of what I need, so... Five hour stream, boys? One sec. I need to text someone something. It'll only take a second. I'm selling my amiibo and someone needs my address to pick it up. I don't even know why I got so many amiibo. I think I only got a bunch of amiibo because fucking Sam and Max were getting it. Social pressure, dude. But I never really used them. I also, when I was getting amiibo, I actually thought Nintendo would do something meaningful with the fucking, like, scanning it, but obviously now it's just collectible, so it's like, what the fuck? They actually made it seem like there was gonna be, like, good game functionality with it, but no. I was like, oh my god. Nintendo figure- Nintendo fucking Skylander esque figures, but it works on multiple games and stuff. Just one, this is an amazing idea. Oh wait, too bad they fucking fucked it up. Dude, over here in particular, there's like this little notch. I don't know what it's for. There's no reason for it. But I always remember it because I, back in 2012, I was making a Mario 64 ROM hack, which I never ended up finishing, and I put a star here. I actually love that hack so much. I should actually play it sometime, even though it's fucking garbage. But I'm so nostalgic for it. I remember, like, making it and what I was thinking while making it. It's just so cool. Let's go back to it. It's called Super Waluigi 64. It's actually my first public video on my YouTube channel, because every other video is unlisted, or private. I think it's private, actually. I have so many fucking cringe privatized videos on my channel. I think most people do, but... I actually have a lot of cringe public videos on my channel. Dude, the other day, I typed in Boblax on YouTube, I was scrolling down for some reason, like, I don't know why, but, like, I guess on the second browser I was on, like, the list was endless, and it never said next. It just kept going down and down and down. And I literally was scrolling for, like, 15 minutes or some shit, or, like, 10 minutes. And I just couldn't stop getting Boblox videos. I'm like, what the fuck? I've made so much shit. Don't even realize how much... And I found, like, videos I even forgot I even made. Like, I did a Sonic Generations LP five years ago. I didn't even remember doing that shit. Crazy, dude. I hate the red coins in this fucking map. When I was a kid, I remember. <laughs> I actually believed that shit too, dude. No joke. I saw that shit, I got so hyped. Waluigi's been my favorite character since I was a kid. Ever since I played him in Mario Party 7, I absolutely love Waluigi. So I was so disappointed when I found out it wasn't actually real, but. Waluigi needs more representation. I feel like every- I feel like there's been such a big love for Waluigi lately, too. I wonder how many sales a Waluigi game would get just based off his meme status online. Very, very curious. What is in your Waluigi hack? I might play it on stream. Oh, it's really bad. Um, so there's a Waluigi character model swap, obviously. And the hack isn't finished, so there's only, like, a couple levels edited. And, um... I don't really think the game design in this good. It's probably complete shit, and you won't know what to do half the time. But, like... A lot of star locations are moved. Um... A lot of just objects in the level are moved around. So it isn't extremely different, but... Like, you gotta, like, go around the level in unique ways. I really actually don't remember it a lot. I know the last level I edited was Snowman's Land. Um, I think I fucked up Cool Cool Mountain, so I just, like, 
blocked it off with a bunch of objects so you can't get to Cool Cool Mountain. Although you could probably glitch into there because I did, I like fucking fucked up the start point on that. Um, I don't, I know, I added a, cup, a couple of stages but... But yeah, it's not really finished, but I guess it's kind of interesting. The lack of Waluigi and Smash Ultimate is the only thing I don't like about it, same. A lot of assist trophies would be cool characters. Bomberman, Squid Sisters, yeah. Well, Squid Sisters, I wouldn't really say is that necessary because they don't really do anything gameplay-wise in the actual Splatoon games, which I guess Palatina doesn't either, but... Um, we already have the Inklings, so I don't really think the Squid Sisters are, would be a super interesting character, but I do definitely agree with Bomberman and Waluigi. Fucking love that shit. Love Waluigi. sound effect. Oh. I wanted to replicate that more accurately, but my throat's actually getting a bit sore from talking so much. Not used to be not used to being able to fucking blab on for hours on end. But they're important in the lore. Just like Waluigi and Bomberman. They have a few small- they do? Oh, I guess they do. I, I guess I'm just not part of that huge following, so I'm not- I guess I'm a little biased, but... I do think they'd actually be cool characters. Like, if they were to add a new character to- like, from Splatoon to Smash Ultimate, Squid Sisters would definitely be up there. Like, they could maybe be a duo, uh, kit, kind of like Ice Climbers. Or it could just be one Squid Sister and then you like cycle through the skins to be Callie, Marie, or maybe even like the two ones in um, Splatoon 2. I forget their names. Oh, Pearl and some other, the black one, the hot ass Squid Sister dude. I need to play Splatoon more, honestly. I just don't really have anyone to play it with, which is why I, I don't play it as much as I like. Because I do enjoy playing it on my own, but after a while, like, it's it's kind of a team game, and I don't really enjoy Turf Wars. I only enjoy the ranked modes, so I don't know. I kind of would love to have, like, a couple people just to, like, team up with and communicate with and, like, try and play to the best of our ability in Squid Squad or something. Or it's called League now, I think. That'd be really cool, but... Splatoon is definitely my favorite shooter game, although I don't play it nearly enough for it being my favorite shooter game. Yeah, Pearl and Marina would work better as pal swaps. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, hold more now. Oh, in my Waluigi hack, I also have th had this weird star where you have to like stand on this and then like backflip or like side flip or something. Yeah, like that. But like you couldn't see the star unless you looked up because it was so high up and the camera angles were all weird. Or like it's just like it is here. I don't know. But I made that shit in 2011, so, I mean, or 2012, so how old was I, like, 14? That's kind of retarded when I was 14, not gonna lie. Oh, I also put red coins, like, right here, like, at the end of the waterfall. Like, quickly getting these. Like, sometimes, no, honestly, sometimes I play Mario 64, and I think about like the little things I did in Waluigi 64 and think it's actually part of the game. And then I'm like, oh, I must have done that in Waluigi 64. But I only really remember Hazy Maze Cave. 
Oh, I, uh, I remember what I did in Lethal Lava Land. It was so fucking stupid. So basically in Lethal Lava Land, like, I used, like, a program back in the day. I don't know if you've ever heard of it because it's probably old and no one uses it. And it was called Toad's Tool. And it basically just, like, is basically, like, a Mario 64 hacking tool for people who didn't actually know how to, like, properly hack. And... What I, what, I think it was in beta or something, so not everything worked properly. So in Lethal Lava Land, you can move the objects, but you only move their textures and not the actual hitboxes. So it caused there to be, like, false platforms where it looks like there's a platform, but there isn't, and you fall through it. And then there was, like, invisible platforms where it's, like, you don't know where the platform is, but it's actually a solid object in, 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 its, in its original location. So literally what I did is it's a level based off trying to memorize the original um, layout of Lethal Lava Land, but everything's just randomly strewn all over the place, so you have to just guess where you have to go. And it was so fucking stupid. People still use that? Boy, Kai's uses that? Did they improve it a lot? I'm guessing they improved it a lot then, what the fuck? God. Dude, maybe I should pick up Waluigi 64 again. Although, I think I fucked up the ROM so much to, like, where I don't know if I could reverse so many, all the fuck-ups I did. Well, the only fuck-up I'm really thinking about is, like, Cuckoo Mountain, but I'm still tilted that I fucked up. Like, I changed- I think I changed the starting point to another object by accident and then saved it, and I didn't know- and I tried to change it back, but it just didn't work. kind of funny that he uses that. I wouldn't think he would, but I don't know. I didn't really- I thought that tool was just kind of like something that people just deemed like, oh, if you use that you're just bad. Because I don't- I don't really think, um, Star Rogue was made with Toad's tool. But I really don't know how to go about hacking. Like, I use these tools, but I didn't think like actual, like, well-known hackers use that shit. I thought they actually like went into the game files and like changed something. Actually, but I don't know. Okay. Oh damn, I didn't actually know that. Hey, so maybe my hack was more legit than I thought. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, I guess. Dude, for some reason, when I think of the Peach's Castle music, I just it just reminds me of Mario vs. Donkey Kong the like uh mini mario toy games because i actually love that series kind of underrated a lot of people got sick of it but i always loved it um I, I especially love the second one but like there's i think there was like a peach's castle level and it had like a remix of the peach's castle theme from this game and i don't know whenever i hear this tune i just think of that because the remixes are so good in that game dude i fucking love the music in that I only played Mini Land Mayhem. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. I enjoyed that. I think Mini Land Mayhem was the first one that kind of like solidified how you control the minis. Because in the second one, you could literally like stop the minis from moving. You could like turn them. You had like a lot of control over them. But in the, then in the future games, they kind of made it more like a mobile game where like you can't stop them from moving. Which kind of adds to the challenge in a way, but... I kind of enjoyed controlling them because then like in the level creator you can make more creative levels. You first heard Peach's Castle and New Super Mario Bros. Wii. I guess that makes sense. A lot of people uh, bought that game back in the day. So. I don't think that was the first time I heard the theme but that was the first time it really like resonated with me and I started like humming it and all that shit. 
I really want to look up that remix now. Okay. Oh, rip. I didn't get all the coins. I'm gonna kill myself. Whenever you fail at life, just KYS. What I always say to you. Let's try that again. Oh yeah, dude, I love the throwback Galaxy and Galaxy 2, dude. That music is so hype. And the first time I saw that level, I'm like, holy shit, it's Mario 64, dude. I I actually really like Galaxy 2 a lot more than Galaxy 1. After doing the Trash of Trio race on Galaxy 1, I actually kind of ended up hating it. Or hating the, uh, the game. Well, not hating the game, but disliking it more than I did previously. And maybe I'd just like Galaxy 2 when I play it again. God, I feel like I'm getting a lot of voice crack. Um, because like the gameplay's are uh, the same, but I do, I, I like remember enjoying all the levels better in Galaxy 2 than Galaxy 1. I like the first one more, but I respect your opinion. To be fair, um, playing Galaxy or any game in the Trash of Trio is a, a bit of a different experience than playing it as an actual game and like taking your time because there's the stress of like oh you have to like do it faster than my colleagues and then and then I also haven't played Galaxy 2 in a long time so maybe my opinion on that is way higher than it should be and maybe my opinion on Galaxy 1 is way lower than it should be but I remember my opinion has always been that I enjoy Galaxy 2 more than 1. Maybe not as drastic as I'm making it out to be because I don't have enough experience with both games at the moment, but I do enjoy Galaxy 2 a lot. Although, Galaxy 2, I did play Galaxy 1 first, but only at a friend's house, and I only played like a handful of stars from it. Like, I played Good Eye Galaxy, I played the B Galaxy, I played some of the uh, galaxies in the fountain. But I didn't really play the game that much. And then Galaxy 2 was my first game I got. Um, Galaxy 2 was actually the very first game I got on launch day. And it was the first uh, Wii game I really owned. Well, I owned Mario Kart Wii before. And Mario, Mario Kart Wii and New Super Mario Bros. Wii before Galaxy 2. But it was like the first like 3D Mario that I like owned and played and I don't know. That's probably a good reason why I like it more than one. So I can't say objectively Galaxy 2 is better than one, but I can say I enjoyed a lot. My mom wouldn't let me play Galaxy 2 until I beat That was one of the first ones of the two games. So I played the two games very close to each other. That's a weird thing to say. Son, you're not allowed to play this game until you beat Bowser on the other game. It's kind of interesting. Um, first one. So you played them very close together. The first game I got launched day was Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Nice. I, I think I got Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon launch day as well. Oh my god, I killed myself. But yeah, I mean, Galaxy 2 actually came out in 2010, and I was pretty young back then. How old was I? No, I was 13 back then, so I actually wasn't that young. Never mind. But it just feels like so long ago. Like, I'm kind of surprised I had the mindset to go out and get that day one. Well, actually, I don't know. Maybe I'm fucking retarded. And 
can't remember my path easily enough. Yeah, I think I'm fucking retarded. Why wouldn't I go get a launch game at the age of 13? What the hell? Do I underestimate my intelligence that much? What the fuck? You almost got Hey Pikmin on launch day, but Amazon took forever to get that shit. Dude, I got Hey Pikmin on launch day in the store. They literally had to get it out because they didn't know that it was coming out because, like, no one fucking gives a shit about Hey Pikmin. So it's like, oh, that game's out? Wait, what's Hey Pikmin, dude? And it took forever to get it out. I was probably the first one in the store who actually asked for that shit. And then the game ended up being kind of not great. Which I didn't expect it to be amazing. It's, prob it's probably as good as I expected it to be. I didn't expect it to be amazing. I didn't expect it to be complete other garbage. Might might have even been a little better than I was expecting. But it's definitely not a game I play again. And it does not satisfy me or hold me over for Pikmin 4 in the slightest. Why are you complaining about Pikmin 4? You had Hey Pikmin a year ago. Hello. The main Pikmin series and the Hey Pikmin are so different. You can't really... It wasn't on shelves yet, so the employees had to get a copy from the special stockpile. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that's what happened to me with Hey Pikmin as well, where they had to get it from the stock, special stock, special file, whatever it's called. I can't even call. The only reason I stopped playing is because I bought. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. The problem with Hey Pikmin for me, and it's my bad, I try- you know how like when you let every Pikmin live in the level you get the little gold badge? I tr I thought you'd get something, I didn't want to spoil myself so I never looked it up exactly, but um, uh, oh no no, okay, um, what am I trying to say? Basically, I tried to 100% the game by getting uh, no Pikmin dead in every level. And I didn't move on to the next level until I had Pikmin, no Pikmin dead in every level. And I thought you would get something for 100%, so it kind of made the experience a little less enjoyable because I had to keep replaying and replaying and trying to finish this shit. And I was always excited to see the next thing and excited to see what un was unlocked when I got 100%. Because it does blatantly give you a reward for not killing any Pikmin, so I'm like... This is so blatant, there's gotta be something you unlock for getting all this shit. And then you don't unlock anything, it's like... Okay, well fuck you too. I know I'm fine with getting nothing for that, but... They shouldn't give you a trophy for not killing any Pikmin if you're not gonna get anything for collecting all the trophies. I feel like at that point, they should've just not given you anything at all for not killing any of the Pikmin. Because at that point, then, it's a, uh, it's a personal challenge, and you don't feel like the game's gonna reward you. Hey, Pikmin is better than Pikmin 1. Changed my mind. Okay, um... The thing about Hey, Pikmin and the other Pikmin games is that they're so different from one another that I can't really... Like, if you enjoyed Hey, Pikmin more than the original three Pikmin games, then I guess I couldn't change your mind, but... Pikmin 1, I liked all three Pikmin games for different reasons. It's kind of unique in that way, because with, like, sequels, you'd feel like one is obviously going to be better than another, and then one, that one's going to be better than the le your least favorite out of the three. But I feel like I enjoy Pikmin 1, 2, and 3 all for different reasons. And Pikmin, the reason I like Pikmin 1 is because um, it's short, and it's a nice compact game to just go and play if you have five hours to kill three hours to kill or whatever you can just go play through the whole game and have a nice time and see and look at the charts after you finish the game and see uh how fast you did it and specifically for me what gives me gratification is doing the game in less and less days like beating pikmin 1 in 12 days for example 
uh, versus like 15 the last time I did it. And it just proves that I'm getting better and it's like refining strategy. So Pikmin's a strategy game. So it, it has a strategy element. It's like a strategy uh, adventure hybrid game, right? And I think Pikmin 1 uh, highlights the strategy better than any other game in the series to where um, like doing everything super fast and getting like 11 days done or like 12 days done and like just keep decreasing your day count your total day count it just feels so rewarding it feels like you're getting better at the game and refining like what you need to do in the game like just refining your skill at Pikmin so it feels really really good to replay a bunch but if I were to just like play Pikmin 1 then Pikmin 2 then Pikmin 3 and judge them all on a standalone experience by playing them all for the first time I feel like Pikmin 1 would probably be the least fun in terms of playing for the first time. But in terms of replayability, I think Pikmin 1's amazing. The beat as fast as possible concept is what I do in every Pikmin, mainline Pikmin game. Yeah, I do that too, but I feel like it's the most fun in Pikmin 1. Is what I'm saying. And it's like, I don't know, I always enjoy, I enjoy like speed running, quote unquote. I don't ever speed run or try to get the world record. I just speed run like try to play it as fast as possible for me and I don't really bother looking up any like uh, glitches or ways to actually do stuff the fastest but on my own time I'll just say, I'll just say casual speedrun for the sake of clarity um, I enjoy casually speedrunning Pikmin 1 more than any other Pikmin game because it's short and because uh, I don't know really enjoy it. But Pikmin 2 is my favorite. Non-casual speedrunning as hell, yeah. I don't really care to get a world record on anything. They're cool to watch, and I guess they're fun to perform if you can do it consistently, but I don't know. Dude, I would hate to be a speedrunner of an RPG, though. Imagine doing fucking those three-hour Kingdom Hearts run speedruns, dude. God. That shit would fucking suck, dude. I would never want to speedrun a game like that. I feel like there's a couple games that I could would like to speedrun. If I actually had the knowledge of how to do it fast, and I feel like I was skilled enough to do it fast, but I really don't think I'm skilled enough to get a world record in any game, so I don't really want to dedicate the time to try and do a speedrun, you know? My first playthrough of Pikmin 2 took like 150 days. I don't see myself doing that again unless I erase the memory of my game from my head. Same. I think my first run was like 120 days. I know it was over 100 for sure. Um, but I was taking my time and just having fun. I think maybe I think maybe the first time I played Pikmin One, I actually didn't beat it in under 30 days. I think I got the bad ending. But yeah, now I couldn't see doing Pikmin Two in like over 50 like if i were to play pikmin 2 now and do it in 50 days i'd be like holy shit that fucking sucks so i don't think i could ever go back to pikmin 2 and play it that slowly i might stop streaming soon just because my voice is getting really sore how long i gonna stream well it's very funny that you said that, right after I said that, but I know the stream delay, but that's <laughs> kind of funny coincidence. Maybe after the star, the star and the Bowser key, because my voice is fucking killing me right now. And the, my, the guy's coming to pick up my amiibo that I'm selling at 6 o'clock, and it's 5 o'clock, so... You have to leave soon anyways? Okay, well, then it's pretty much convenient for all of us that I end the stream soon. 
Plus, I may want to make a highlight on my YouTube channel of this stream, and if the stream is, like, less than two hours long, then it's probably more plausible to do that. Although, I'm fucking lazy, and I procrastinate the hell out of stuff. Like, for example, um, I don't know what to call it. I guess I could call you Untitled. Um, I mean, that's your username, but it kind of seems weird to call someone Untitled. But anyways, um, uh, I played your Bikman hack in November 2017, and I was gonna make a video on it, and I'm still gonna make a video on it, um, and I have a good portion of it edited, but I, I don't know why, but I've just been editing it so slowly, like, sometimes I even forget the video exists, so, like, I just never prioritize editing it, so I've had, um, I've had, what the fuck, what am I trying to say? I've had that video, like, being slowly edited over the last seven months, or like eight months. Oh, it might have been December 2017 then. Yeah, it was December 2017. Or was it January? I know it's gonna be outdated as hell. I only did day one though. I only reacted to day one in the video, so. It should be fine. I know a lot of stuff's gonna be changed, but... And it's also not gonna be like the, um, the, what is it? The Land of Torture videos, where it's kind of just like me doing kind of like a let's play. It's gonna be more edited up into like kind of a more of a montage type style video. But, I don't know. I don't know why that shit's been taking so long. I'm so bad at, like, actually doing that shit. But, I actually like the video a lot so far. And who knows, maybe it'll be done in time for the one year anniversary of me starting to make that video. Cause I'm fucking retarded and I don't edit shit. Cause I'm too busy playing League of Legends. And Mario 60's Warframe. Fuck you, Bowser. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Easy, dude. One shot. Okay. Oh. Okay, well, that's it for the stream. A nice short stream. It's 5 p.m. on the dot. I'd like to thank untitled for talking with me during the stream i had fun talking about the various things we talked about and um i would say hopefully i will be streaming more in the future but i'm fucking lazy as fuck so maybe my next stream's in a month or two months or a year i don't fucking know but i enjoyed my time thanks for watching i gotta give you that heart real